Ah, and we are live. Welcome back to Takes by Fans. We got a great show for you today. As always, we are live every single day at noon Eastern. If you want to watch live, head over to twitch.tv slash takes by fans. If you want to watch but not live, head over to our YouTube channel, Takes by Fans. We post all of our shows and clips of the show there on a daily basis. And if you just want to listen, we are on podcasting apps, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio. So, however you want to watch or listen, we've got you covered multiple ways. Alrighty, today's a big old Monday, and man, oh man, how was that playoff weekend? Holy moly, just wrapping up yesterday with, oh my goodness, Maybe, maybe the greatest first playoff game, first round matchup, Celtics-Nets last night. Oh my goodness, this series is living up to some serious hype. It is us versus y'all on this one. We like the Celtics, y'all like the Nets, and man, oh man, the game did not disappoint last night. Celtics end up winning by one after a wild, crazy, clutch, unclutch fourth quarter. There's so much to talk about, so much to break down on that just one game alone. I think we could spend the entire show just is breaking down the Celtics nets from yesterday folks but but there's more than that we've got to talk about so today on the show breaking down all the games from yesterday folks betting on the games tonight yes there are still NBA playoff games on tonight once again this is the golden era of the NBA and I believe it will carry on at minimum until next weekend as well so I believe next weekend we will also get a Saturday Sunday full of NBA games Games, even if there is like a 4-0 sweep, I believe the you know four games lasts us until Saturday, Sunday as well. So once again, take in this week. We've got three games on every single day until the weekend where, where we will get four. So once again, relish this week period of NBA basketball. And it's already been kicked off with some great basketball already. So, betting on today's action, breaking down yesterday's action in the NBA. Uh, the finalists of all the awards have been announced, so we'll kind of quickly talk through that in the NBA as well. Not a lot of uh, NFL stories to go over. There's really none, maybe one, maybe two. Uh, but I believe we will be breaking some news to some 49ers fans. And I don't know who nears, needs to hear this, and this is good news, but y'all are going to take this as bad news, but we uh, we will be breaking some news here, breaking some reality for some 49ers fans because the response I got to this tweet yesterday, it's like, y'all don't even know. It's like, what, what? Y'all believe this? Like, what are y'all talking about? The 49ers fans, folks, no disrespect, but they're some of the craziest people I, I, I see out there. I'm like, y'all are actively complaining about a uh, quarterback that gets you to the Super Bowl or right on the doorstep of the Super Bowl, a la Aaron Rodgers, who y'all kind of like gush over all the time. But the 49ers, that's not good enough for them. Getting to the Super Bowl or close to the Super Bowl on a regular basis isn't good enough for the 49ers fans. I just don't get it. So we'll be breaking some news on what is going to happen with Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers because the 49ers fans, uh, they don't see it for some reason. I don't understand why their judgment is so cl uh, clouded on this whole Jimmy G thing, but we'll talk about that when we get there. <clears throat> And then uh, we will most likely watch Kenny Pickett today, folks. Most likely there should be time in the show because we don't really have that much NFL stories to go over. Um, so, yeah, let's kick out the show. And before we kick out the show, folks, um, I know that um, – we, we uh, brought this up a few days ago on the show. Aaron Rodgers potentially committing physical assault on a minor, potentially there. And, you know, we said that we would not stop uh, accusing Aaron Rodgers and bringing this to, atten to the attention of everybody in the media and all that. That we would not stop and st until we sought justice, until we had justice done for Aaron Rodgers. 
So, we haven't really been talking about it on the show since then, but this is how we're going to deal with it from here, from today, until justice has been served. And I don't think justice will ever be served here on Aaron Rodgers, because once again, y'all will not hold him accountable, but we will hold him accountable over here. So, until we get justice, until Aaron Rodgers faces some sort of punishment, and what we're looking at, folks, is really 10 years minimum exiled from the league. That's really what should be happening with Aaron Rodgers here. But until we get until we get Aaron Rodgers facing some sort of punishment, this will be our profile picture for the uh, for the time being. Until justice has been served for Aaron Rodgers, folks. We have this man caught in 4K committing the one second right before the act of physical violence happened folks we have this man caught we all know this is Aaron Rodgers right here he is caught in 4k in our profile picture folks and this will not be changed and this may even be a canvas this may even be a canvas this upcoming season folks having Aaron Rodgers on the background of every single one of our episodes committing physical assault yes Roger Goodell, do something, please. Yes, this type of violence cannot be stood for in the NFL, and I will not stand for it over here. It takes my fans. So until Aaron Rodgers faces, faces justice for this abhorrent act of physical violence with a football, this will be our profile picture. So there's that. And then the last thing I just want to quickly touch upon before we truly kick off the show is the USFL. And I will be real with y'all. I did not watch any, well, I watched a couple minutes, a few minutes of USFL football over the weekend. But I mean, folks, we were just focusing on the NBA. This is just a bad time for a new football league to be introduced when we have no interest in the players or the plot or any of the narratives because these are not good players overall because if they were good, they'd be in the NFL. So it's just we're in the season of great competition. We're not going to not watch great competition to watch subpar, not even professional football. So it's unfortunate for the USFL. We wanted to give it time on the show. I wanted to talk about it, but it's just a really bad timing issue. We've got playoff basketball. We have the Nets and the Celtics. Like if y'all were watching the USFL over Nets versus Celtics last night, it's like I can't help y'all. I can't save y'all. I mean, you, you're just not serious about high levels of competition I guess because that was some of the best basketball I think I've seen all year long um, so USFL uh, uh, they've got the drones they've got the mics they've got all of that we can hear the quarterback calling it but does that make it less interesting with all with everything going around breaking kind of you know the 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 rose colored kind of curtain does it take away? I know that's kind of their selling point on the USFL. Hey, we get to be in the huddle. Hey, we get to hear the quarterback play uh, call the plays. Hey, we get to hear all this. Hey, the drone. Wow, kickoffs, drones. Whoa. I know that's their selling points, but does it work? Is it good? It's all right. It's cool to hear, but I mean, once you heard it once, I mean, we get it. Now we're predicting the plays and all that, and is that supposed to be the selling point as well? Uh, so I don't know if the USFL is doing it for us, folks, but but we do have some stake here because the Breakers are the official team of Takes by Fans. So did the Breakers win their first game or should we just kind of like cancel our partnership with them? Because we're not going to have a losing team be the face of our show. Absolutely not. So let's quickly recap all the scores yesterday to see. Um, I couldn't bet on this. I tried to bet on this on fr uh, Saturday, the first game, and I didn't see it on DraftKings. Kings. I didn't relook um, yesterday when three games were on, but I don't think you can uh, bet on these on DraftKings, so that's not good either. Not helping their cause of trying to get some attention to this. 
But the first game we had up was the Stallions, Birmingham Stallions versus the New Jersey Generals, and the Stallions win 28 to 24. Then we got the Gamblers at the Panthers, and these are all on the same field. They all play in the same stadium. Uh, Gamblers uh, versus the Panthers. Gamblers get the win 17 to 12. Then this is yes, sir, right there. Stars, Philadelphia Stars versus the New Orleans Breakers, and the New Orleans Breakers start the season one. 1-0, winning 23 to 17 over the Philadelphia Stars. And then I guess we have a game on tonight. FS1, 7 o'clock, Tampa Bay Bandits versus the Pittsburgh Maulers. Once again, unfortunately, there's playoff basketball on. I don't know if we're going to be tuning into FS1 to watch Bandits at Maulers, but our team over here, the Breakers, baby, 1-0, bingo, bingo, beating the Philadelphia Stars. Bob, Blob, the mask mascot that we were kind of insulting on the show. Yeah, our mascot, our team destroyed the stars. Yeah, yeah. See, there's we we only we only settle for greatness over here at Takes by Fans, folks. We're not having the losers generals, the loser Panthers, the loser stars. No, no, no. It's the New Orleans Breakers, folks. Y'all better recognize that's the best team in the USFL, folks. <clears throat> Uh, so USFL, folks, it's all right. It's good. Chris Collinsworth's son is calling the games. It was pretty good on NBC. They got Jason Garrett in the booth. That man, you know, how unfortunate, how the, how the mighty have fallen. Head coach, offensive coordinator, now calling USFL games. Ooh, ooh, not great there. Uh, but, yeah, overall, you know, it's football. It's all right. Passes the time, but it's unfortunate that there is playoff basketball on. It's just unfortunate. So, USFL, not going to get uh, the time in the show that uh, we were originally planning on potentially giving it unfortunate. Alrighty, but let's jump into the NBA from last night because there is so much to talk about, so much to break down, and she, 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 she this, if this is the introduction, we're getting to the playoffs, now all game ones have been played, uh, so now we're heading into game two starting tonight, man oh man, welcome to the playoffs, folks, it's gonna be absolutely fantastic, I'm, ooh, ooh, folks, I love it, I love it, this week, folks, man oh man, yesterday, I'm telling y'all, that Nets Celtics game, if y'all didn't watch that, I feel so far sorry for y'all. I truly do because that was some. Um, we just got to talk. We just got to get there, folks. We got to get there. It's the second game up, so we don't have to wait that long, but it, it's great, folks. All right, but let's start up with game one. Hawks at the Heat, and we love the Heat, folks. This is going to be a sweep. It's unfortunate. The Hawks with no Clint Capella, unfortunate. Trey Young just, you know, not playing good. And we've seen this with Trey Young all year. We've seen Trey Young flounder. This is not the Hawks' year. It's just not. Once again, we've seen this Hawks team take a giant step back from last season to this season. Trey Young has not been as consistent as he was last season to this season season and that's a huge reason why this Hawks team is not good why they are the eighth seed why they had to you know do the playing tournament just to beat or just to get beat by this heat team this Hawks team is not like they were last year. Unfortunate. But this Heat team, they re-showed their dog mentality. This is the playoffs now. So we knew the Heat, the dog Heat, the kennel Heat would show up. And that's exactly what happened. We swallowed 7.5 with the Heat last night. And we had no problem covering that. They went by 24, folks. 115-91. to And this one started right off the rip. Uh, was there even any lead changes here in this game? I don't think there was any lead changes. One lead change. That was it. One lead change. That's it. He basically winning and dominating this entire game, folks. This is a no contest. This will be a 4-0 sweep by this Heat team. So let's start here with the Heat since they got the win. Kyle Lowry, 10 points, 9 assists, 4 rebounds last night. Getting it done. And I'm a little upset because I had a player prop on Kyle Lowry, um, and it was fantastic. I had four player props yesterday, um, kind of all on one parlay. 
and they were all great. Three hit. This is the only one that didn't hit, and because I was so confident on uh, the bet, I had to re-bet it after this game because this was the first game on, so Kyle Lowry immediately lost me the bet, uh, but the other three got it done, so he's lucky I re-bet it. Uh, but this was it, folks. Kyle Lowry over 24 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. He had 10 points, 9 assists, 4 rebounds. That's at 23, folks, right? 23. And what did he do? He didn't play any of the fourth quarter because it was a blowout. So I was I was furious. I was like, oh, this is hitting all day. He's already at 23 three quarters in. And then he didn't play any of the fourth quarter because it was a blowout. So Trey Young and the Hawks are so trash. These players are not even playing in the fourth quarter. Games are done by the fourth quarter. This is going to be a 4-0 sweet folks it's done it's over we can predict so the next time next game two which probably kicks off uh tomorrow will swallow 10 11 i may have to swallow 12 and that's going to be the interesting thing today when we look at the lines how much have the lines moved is vegas going to overcorrect or going to they are they going to kind of stand still in that first spread carry the spread from game 1 to game number 2 and just see how it plays out again so we'll see how the spread change from game 1 to game 2 and if we're still willing to swallow all those points that we did in game 1 or or are we going to flip on the other side and start taking some points? So the three games on tonight, it's going to be interesting how Vegas sees those games and spreads playing out. So we'll catch up on that uh, when we get to the betting portion of the show. Uh, so Kyle Lowry, he got it done. 10 points, 9 assists, 4 rebounds. Unfortunately, did not cash our player prop parlay. But just for the other ones that we had, uh, we had Marcus Marr over 24.5 points, rebounds, and assists. That cashes. Brooke Lopez over 17.5 points, rebounds, and assists. That was too easy to call, folks. Absolutely. The man had 11 points in like the first quarter alone. It was easy. He did take until the fourth quarter to truly cash it, but at the end of the day, it did cash. And then DeAndre in over 30.5 points, rebounds, and assists. And the man ends with 32. Bingo, bango. Uh, once again, going down to the wire in the fourth quarter. But at the end of the day, they all hit. And Kyle Lowry should have hit as well. We should have hit it. But it's unfortunate. Well, we did hit it. We re it. But we digress. All right. So Kyle Lowry, 10 points, 9 assists. Max Drew still in the starting lineup at the 2. 9 points, 2 rebounds. So Max Drew's pretty solid game overall. Once again, the, the number two spot here that Duncan Robinson's been playing all year long, that Max Drews has now just pl been playing in the last few games that we do like, but I mean, he's still like the fourth option on this team, so we don't need anything big, magnificent. We just need solid levels of, of production here, but why we love Max Drews in the starting lineup is because now uh, Duncan Robinson's off the bench, and Duncan Robinson had a magnificent game, and we love this man coming off the bench. He thrives so much more better. It's more positive production for the team overall because when he's in the starting lineup, he gets he gets lost out there. You've got Kyle Lowry and Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo who, you know, are all, you know, great scorers and they are great facilitators of the floor as well. But Duncan Robinson, he just gets lost in that shuffle. You're the fourth option out there. So moving him down to the bench where he can be the impact, he's like the number two out on the bench. Can't really put him as the number one because we still have Kyle Lowry, sixth man of the year. But, you know, he's like a number two scorer. He's, he goes from number four to number two off the bench. It's fantastic. And he absolutely thrived last night. The man shot eight of nine from the three, folks. Eight of nine for the three. 27 giant points led the team in scoring last night for the Heat. So, Donkey Robinson coming off the bench. We absolutely love it. Bam Adebayo didn't even really have to do anything. Six points, five assists, six rebounds. Only took five shots. Everything else was falling. A la Duncan Robinson's threes. Uh, so Bam Adebayo with no Clint Capella, they haven't even began to scratch the surface of that. Eric Spolstra's game plan in this game was not hammer the paint down low. They rarely did that. So now in game two, when the Hawks are just kind of you know guarding the perimeter because they're like, oh my goodness, they're just gonna keep hitting the threes and you know beat us by the threes. The Heat shot. 18 of 30 uh, 18 of 38 from the 3 47 percent it was very very well done so the Heat may just be guarding the perimeter in game two. And that's the perfect time for Eric Spolster and the Heat to be like, no, we're going to feed Bam Adebayo and have Bam Adebayo score like 30 points. So we've only seen half of this Heat team in the series. 
It's only game one, folks. So, yes, we will still be swallowing points come game two, three, and four. This is a 4-0 clean sweep. Now, for the rest of the heat last night, P.J. Tucker, 16 points. The man shot 4 of 4 from the three. 100% from the three. Now, we're starting to get dangerous. And then Jimmy Butler, classic Jimmy Butler game, 21 points, four assists, six rebounds, three steals. Yes, sir, getting it done. Tyler Hero struggled off the bench, shooting 27% on 11 shots. But everybody else was good, so it didn't really matter in the long run. He get the win. And then for the Hawks last night, Trey Young struggled mightily, folks. Mightily. Shot one of 12 from the field, folks. 8%. The man shot 8% last night. Eight single digits. It's not it for the Hawks this year. It's unfortunate. Don't take the points with the Hawks. It may look like good value. It is not. Folks, we have to remember this Heat team is still the number one seed in the Eastern Conference while this Hawks team was in the playing tournament. This is a mismatch, and the Hawks don't have Clint Capella. They don't have Clint Capella. I mean, the Hawks were struggling with Clint Capella just to win and get into the playoffs of course they'd be struggling a hundred more percent without him do not please for the love of goodness do not bet the Hawks any game two three or four it's done it's done folks swallow points it's okay to swallow points first round I truly guarantee you it's okay we just swallowed 10 and a half with the Bucks last night. That didn't pan out. But we also swallowed 10 and a half with the Suns, and that did pan out. So it's okay to swallow big spreads here. And that's coming from us who hate swallowing big spreads, who had a fear of it and aversion to it. But we know we faced our fears. We got over it. But that's coming from us, folks. Swallow the points. It's okay. So Trey Young, nothing good last night. Eight points, four assists, six rebounds. Kevin Herter struggled, eight points and eight shots. O uh, Anika Okongwu at the starting five in lieu of no Clint Capella. And he had 3.7 rebounds. That's not going to be enough. Daniil Gallinari, 17 points. DeAndre Hunter, 14 points. Nobody scoring 20-plus points for this Hawks team. Of course, they're not going to win. So he get the win, 115-91. They set the tempo hard. They sent the tempo hard on this series from game one. One. The Heat Dogs are here, folks. We'll have to reevaluate this Heat team in round two to see how they fare in their second round matchup. But for this first round matchup against the Hawks, folks, it's done. The series is over. Can we bet? I don't know. Can we bet uh, series props anymore? I doubt it. Um, I doubt we can bet Heat 4-0 sweep now. What do we get? Anything? Series markets? Y'all still up? Y'all still up a uh, series correct score? Yeah, we can. Oh, we can still bet these? Oh, look at DraftKings. I want 4-0 sweep. Look at this, folks. Look at this. Look at this. 4-0 sweep last night is at plus 300. Heat 4-1 is at plus 240. This is the second best odds you can get it at 4-0 sweep. Yeah, 4-0 sweep for the Heat at plus 300. Go bet that, folks. This is done. They The Hawks won't even win at home. It won't even be a challenge at home, folks. It's done. The series is over. Heat will sweep them for nothing. It's unfortunate, but that's the world we're living in currently, folks. The Hawks are done. The Hawks are fried chicken. The done. The birds are done. The birds are fried. Heat get the win, 115-91. <clears throat> Alrighty, here we go, folks. The best game of the year. The best game of the playoffs, hand down. Potentially the best game of the entire season. Man, man. And if you did not watch this game, y'all need to make sure you watch it as soon as possible. However you can watch it, um, you know, get a, game, a league pass. See if you can go back and watch this game because that's how great and entertaining this game was. Nats at the Celtics. I'm about to read. Watch it. I'm about to rewatch it after the show because I, I I cannot get enough of this game, folks. Absolutely unbelievable. My jaw was on the floor watching the final seconds, the final 10 seconds of this game. I said out loud, this is the craziest game I've ever seen. One of the best endings I've ever seen in the NBA, folks. That's how great this game was, folks. And everybody's still on the nets and everybody wants to be big on the nets. And I'm sure a lot of people are today. I haven't seen it yet. But, uh, you know, I'll see more after the show once kind of everybody, you know, takes and opinions are out there officially um, and clipped up and all that so everybody can see. Uh, but... 
the, I'm sure everybody's going to be saying, you know, this is why you should be afraid of the Nets. You know, hey, they only lost by one. They're going to still win the series and all that. But I think you're reading it the wrong way. It's once again, this is why we should be afraid of the Celtics. And we've got, you know, plays to point out. So let's talk about these plays. Let's go down to these plays and tell y'all why we should be afraid of the Celtics still. And why we're really still not afraid of this Nets team, honestly. So Celtics get the one point win, winning 115 to 114. Unfortunately, they don't cover the minus four. We were talking them up to minus nine and a half. That was the max you could bet them up to. We even, you know, kind of took some, uh, you know, we had to go down to a deep, dark alley, you know, very shady part of town to bet $10,000 on the Celtics minus 14 and a half because no uh, sports books were offering that high of a spread. That didn't pan out either. So I'm in some hot water over here. Hopefully they don't come knocking on the studio as we're live. Uh, but we digress there. Uh, Celtics only win by one, 115, 114. But, but it's exactly how they won this game, folks. Sheesh, sheesh, sheesh. So let's take it here. Final 19 seconds of the game. Nets up one, 114, 113, and Kevin Durant, and once again, why we're still not totally scared of this Nets team, Kevin Durant's unclutchability this year, and only this year alone. It's starting to truly show Kevin Durant may just be having an unclutch season, and it's unfortunate, but that's kind of, you know, clutchness. It comes and it goes. Nobody's 100% clutch rate. I mean, you could be like 60%, 70% clutch rate, but we're still getting a 30%, 40% unclutch rate, and I think this is part of that 30%, 40% unclutch rate for Kevin Durant, and it's unfortunate, but another unclutch ability here by Kevin Durant they're up 1.114 1 to 113. Kevin Durant, step back three against Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum, and uh, we've already been calling Jason Tatum a superstar. We've been calling this man a superstar ever since we started the show a year and a half ago, and I've been muddling it under my breath for the last three years. Hey, this dude's a superstar. I already saw, the first time I saw Jason Tatum in the NBA on the Celtics, I was like, yes, this man is a superstar. <clears throat> but some of y'all, some of y'all are still reluctant and hesitant to give this man that superstar, uh, the superstar title. Why? Why? The man locked up Kevin Rant here, right here, to keep it a one-point game. Look at that. Look at that closeout. Kevin Rant, easy money, slim reaper, easy money sniper. And he, 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 he decent him up perfectly. Kevin Rant to miss three. To go up four, this would have ended the game. 14 seconds left. Nets up four. Game over. Game over. Nets steal game one on the road. Feeling good. Heading into game two. But no, Jason Tatum D's him up one on one. No help here. No help here. ISO defense at the top three point arc. Look at this man. Doesn't let Kevin Rant move to the left. Bodies him up. Kevin Rant has to step back and go to the right now. Jason Tatum's right there with him. And then closes out. Look at that, folks. Look at this close out. Bingo, bango, tough, tough. And Kevin Rand could not shoot over Jason Tatum. Superstar, correct? Look at that miss off the back iron. And Al Horford with the big rebound we love. And look at the lineup here on the kind of to close out the game. Exactly kind of what we wanted the starting lineup to be. Derek White, Jason Tatum, Marcus Marr, Jalen Brown, Al Horford. Get Daniel Tice out of there. And I'm so glad Daniel Tice is not in the end of games because that man is unfortunately the worst player on the Celtics. <clears throat> so, Al Horford getting it done still. This is a Bigs World OG Big still getting it done in today's NBA. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, this is all why should we should be afraid of the Celtics. Jason Tatum, great defense. Al Horford getting big boards down late. Yes. Yes. And then, and then for the best play right here, folks, tying it all together and truly why we should be afraid of the Celtics. Here we go. Now, officially secure the rebound, right? 
Here we go. We had to break it up into three different plays to truly get it all. So here we go. The miss, the rebound by Al Horford. 14 seconds left. Celtics now officially only down one, and they have a timeout, but the head coach, Ima Uduka, he does not call the timeout. He lets them play. Oh my goodness. What? That's so absurd, right? Letting them play, not calling the timeout, not drawing up the last play, all that. The head coach having faith in his superstars. Big time closeout. The energy, it's rocking and you're at home and he doesn't screw with it. Let's them play on. Great coaching. You better believe Steve Nash is calling a timeout in this situation. Okay, let me bring out a board here and pretend like I know what I'm doing and drop a play for Kevin Rand or Kyrie Irving. That's what um that's what Steve Nash would have did. But no no no. Uh, I can't even count a, I can't even call him head coach of the year finalist because he's not. How absurd is that? And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But Emo Duca is not even a top three head coach of the year candidate? What the hell is that? That's disrespectful, but we'll save that for a little bit later in the show. But great job head coaching. Great job trusting and just trusting your players. Hey, y'all got it. Final 10 seconds. Y'all got it. The energy has got it. I trust y'all. We don't have to stop it here and lose the momentum and let me try to use my big brain IQ to drop the game winning play. Nah, y'all got it. Y'all got it. First year head coach on this Celtics team. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. I trust y'all. I trust y'all players to get it done. And that's exactly what they did because we're going right back to Jason Tatum for the game winner. Great closeout defense for this opportunity and then goes out and wins the game by scoring the game winning layup right at the buzzer I'm talking literal seconds middle of seconds away from not beating the buzzer so shout out to Emo Duca for not calling the timeout so, all right, just to keep score folks just to keep score in the last three seconds of this game right that we've covered Jason Tatum, great lockdown defense. Coach of the year, making smart, no timeout calls, letting them play. Al Horford, OG Big, still getting it done. That's three reasons alone why we should all be afraid of the Celtics, yes? But there's more, so let's keep going on. So here we go. Al Horford gets the rebound. Derek White's got the ball now. They dribble up the court. Derek White passes it to Jalen Brown now nine seconds left over midcourt Jalen Brown dribbling trying to hit the baseline he gets locked up a little bit three defenders start to collapse on him so Jalen Brown looks for an outlet pass time's winding down folks time's winding down Jalen Brown may be stuck down low at the baseline a little bit another potential opportunity for Ima Uduka to be like oh oh, oh I'm calling timeout oh it got a little oh it got a little dicey down there oh 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 almost turned it over oh oh almost lost possession almost forced up a bad shot let me call a timeout to save the squad from themselves no no let them play play on go out and get it done so here we go times winding down down one need a score but they use the entire clock and nobody's even panicking you know how many times a player would just throw up and chuck up a bad shot with five six seven seconds left we've seen it all season folks we've called it out every single time Jalen Brown gets kind of double team. He's got to make a pass. He finds Marcus Smart wide open. Look at this man. Call him for the ball right here. Two hands up wide open. Give me the ball. The, the clock is running out. We must chuck up a shot. Marcus Smart gets the ball right. And what does he do? Three seconds left. There's three and a half seconds left. You must shoot. Somebody shoot up the ball. The clock is running down. Two defenders fly at Marcus Smart. And what does Marcus Smart do? Dribble. Drive. Now two seconds left, passes the ball, still looking to make the best play, even though the clock is winding down, there's 1.3 seconds left on the clock, somebody put up the shot, and that's where Jason Tatum comes in. <clears throat> Jason Tatum saw Marcus Smart driving. Jason Tatum drives to the basket as well. Gets open in this nice 360 catch spin layup. We got to take it all the way back because we have to watch this one in real time because that's how fantastic it is. So here we go. We get the Marcus Smart dribble. Pass. Watch Jason Tatum roll. Roll over Kyrie Irving. Catch. Roll. Finish. Layup. Game. Winner. In Boston. Game one. Jason Tatum. Superstar again. And on the offensive and the crowd goes crazy. Look
look at this arena. Man, oh, man. Oh, yeah, Jason Tatum, superstar. Everybody wanting to maul this man. What an absolute winner. And some people still have the gall to not count this man a superstar. After, though, the final 20, the final 10 seconds of this game, Jason Tatum locking up Kevin Durant and then scoring on Kyrie Irving. Okay, that's, that's what y'all told me was scary about the Nets. Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. Well, if y'all are scared on the Nets for that, well, what should we be thinking about the Celtics? The ones that beat the scary teams. The one that slays the scary ones. Ooh, he must be terrifying. Oh, yeah, the, the Celtics are terrifying if the Nets are scary. Yes? Yes? So respect the Celtics, Jason Tatum superstar, Marcus Smart. I mean, I, I I think I would say this, and I think I'm I think I'm comfortable in saying this. Let's say the roles were reversed a little bit here, where it's, it was the Nets down one, and the Nets in this situation where they have to get a bucket. If this is Kyrie Irving where Marcus Smart is, or if this is Kevin Durant where Marcus Smart is, I think they're taking the three. I think they're taking this quick catch and shoot as two defenders are trying to close out on them. Now, they may have hit the shot because we know they can both score easy peasy. We know they're great shooters in this league who have made big shots in their career, but overall, this Celtics team on self Fishness, looking for the best opportunity, cool as a clam under pressure. We, we, folks, folks, look at this clock. It is ticking away, and nobody's really moving with any urgency. Nobody's like, oh my goodness, like, oh my, like, uh, uh, I gotta, I gotta shoot, gotta shoot, gotta shoot. Jalen Brown didn't even like pump fake um, when he was driving baseline, drawing those two, those two defenders in. It's not like he was like, oh, I gotta shoot it now. Ooh, let me pull it down. Ooh, now, now let me look. No, there, nobody was looking to sh shoot to shoot up or put up a dumb lackadaisical, ill-advised shot here. Nerves of steel. That's coached, and that's leadership, baby. And they, the Celtics have it both in spades, folks. I'm telling y'all, this Celtics team from top down is so gosh dang good, folks. And they have not been, been getting the respect that they really deserve all year long. That pass by Marcus Smart, that just... The mental, all they really had to do was look at each other. Can we take this frame by frame? Here we go. Jason Tatum at the top of the three-point line when Marcus Mart catches the ball. Here we go. Now, he sees Marcus Mart may shoot this ball, so Jason Tatum's getting ready to crash the boards. He's ready on a full-on sprint to crash the boards. Then he sees Marcus Mart actually dribble and pull it down, so he lets up a little bit. And then look at this. Look at the vision. Marcus Mart, folks, the vision A1 point guard tier one excuse me tier one point guard in this league folks respect Marcus Mart I'm telling y'all y'all can actively not respect Daniel Tice that's fine that's fine but everybody else on the Celtics team y'all gotta respect them folks because they are getting it done the vision the pass by Marcus Mart right here to Jason Tatum wide open in the paint catches the ball sees it Marcus Mart throws it absolutely Absolutely beautifully and then Jason Tatum just to catch spin lay up it's absolutely magnificent with like one second and counting on the clock clutch lay up score win the game with 0.1 seconds it's a literal buzzer beater spin catch layup folks folks oh my goodness and the Celtics win by one 115 to 114 because of the Celtics the terrifying Celtics folks it was absolutely brilliant this game all the way in the fourth quarter. Kyrie was hitting some big time shots. And I don't want to get lost in the shuffle because we are going to talk about Kyrie because how can we not? I mean, obviously we have to discuss. I mean, I'm sure y'all know what's going on with Kyrie. I'm sure y'all have heard of it. Uh, so we're obviously got to talk about it. But I don't want to knock Kyrie Irving because, once again, um, you know, we're, we're not scared of the Nets. Kevin Durant is fantastic, phenomenal player. So, so, same thing with Kyrie Irving. But, once again, why we can't be scared of this Nets team? At the end of the day, folks, this is still a team sport. I know we talk about players like it's not a team sport in the NFL and in the NBA. But we do also have to realize this is a team sport. One player alone is really not going to be enough to single-handedly win you a ring in really any team sport. 
court. It's a little bit easier in basketball to do with only one person than in the NFL. But, uh, I mean, LeBron really couldn't even do it himself. And we know he's one of the best players on the planet. So if he can't get it done really by himself, he can carry you to the finals. It's tough for him to win the finals by himself. So we still have to be scared of teams. And even if these great stars don't have, uh, or if these stars don't have great talent around them, we really shouldn't be scared of the team overall. So I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't, uh, I don't want to knock Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and not give them the props. Ka Kevin Durant, not the greatest game out here. Once again, that clutchability factor is seeming to be uh, disappeared this season. Once again, you know, his record speaks for itself here, folks. Over LeBron James, we say it all the time. In the finals, Kevin Durant pulling up over LeBron James deep as heck it's ridiculous uh, but to clinch that series I mean that's one of the clutchest shots ever same thing with Kyrie Irving over uh, Steph Curry against the Warriors in the finals for to help you know LeBron James uh, win a ring absolutely clutch as heck shot uh, but <coughs> Kevin Durant, unclutchability, not right here. But um, Kyrie Irving, right here, folks. Here we go. 50 seconds left. Tie game at 111. Kyrie Irving over Marcus Smart to drain the three. Bingo. Bingo. Now the Nets are on top. It's unfortunate, though. The Nets still lose the game, even though Kyrie Irving came up big in this game and was talking all of his stuff, and that's what we're talking about next. But just because a team has Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving doesn't mean they're a scary team. Yes, they're great. I'm not taking away anything from Kevin Durant or Kyrie Irving. They're phenomenal players. They're generational talents. And what, you know, one of our main mottos on the show is let's not kind of, you know, um, knock greatness in so uh, let me phrase it like this. Let's live in the moment and respect the greatness as we're watching them. And let's not get too caught up in knocking, quote unquote, the greatness like Tom Brady. Let's all respect Tom Brady um, and not kind of, you know, say he's trash and he's so bad and not enjoy him in the moment while we have them. So let's not do that with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, but let's also kind of not over gush about them and say we're scared of them and everything like that. Scared of the Nets overall. All right, let's draw the line a little bit. So Kevin, uh, Kyrie Irving still played fantastic in this game overall. Huge clutch fourth quarter, hitting some big-time shots. Just unfortunate, the defense wasn't quite there. And that's what we know is kind of the biggest knock on this Nets team overall. They don't play any defense. And that defense down the stretch, it was crazy because it was hectic. But once again, that's why we're scared of the Celtics. Because Ime Uduka made it hectic. Didn't let the Nets get set in their defensive set or anything like that. No, no, no. Here it is. We're playing final 15 seconds game winning on the line we all knew the Celtics were going to take the last shot because there is no uh, shot clock here it's turned off so Emo Duca is like hey I'm not letting the Nets get set up they don't play good defense good transition defense so we're going out on transition right now and we're going to live and die by the result and that chaos I mean we had two players jumping at Marcus Smart for a three we had two players jumping at him I mean, that's not good defense, but it's hectic. It's good in this moment. Hey, we know there's not a lot of time left. Let's just fly at him. Let's just fly at him. And hopefully he turns over the ball, shoots up the shot. We block it, something like that. So the chaotic defense by the Nets, which isn't good when it's not chaotic, we knew it was going to break down here. So once again, this is why. Just because the Nets have the superstars, let's not disrespect other great teams, right? Let's not get caught up in the Nets. Oh, the Nets are so good, and we should only be focusing on the Nets because they have Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. They're so scary. No, because now you're actively disrespecting the Celtics by not giving them their attention. So I think y'all are just still, once again, going a little bit too overboard on the Nets here we'll see how game two plays out uh once again the Nets they all had to play flawless Kyrie Irving had to play flawless here just to lose by one point what we saw you know a few weeks ago where the Nets won by seven against the Cavs in that uh, first playing tournament game but it took everybody playing flawless everybody in the starting lineup playing flawless just to win by seven points so it's once again the Nets team we're not scared of the Nets team overall yes on any given day we're obviously terrified of Kevin Kevin Durant, a um, little bit, not maybe every game, maybe every other game, every other other game for Kyrie Irving. Uh, you know, the point still stands. But <clears throat> this overall team is not what it needs to be to win a ring. And even if Ben Simmons comes back, I don't know if it's going to be this year either, folks. So, 
We get the Boston Celtics winning 115-114, getting it done. And then, obviously, the second biggest story here is Kyrie Irving. Um, you know, getting into it a little bit. John back and forth with the crowd. And once again, I've got no problem with that at all. I've got no problem with Kyrie Irving flicking off the crowd, yelling at the crowd, talking to the crowd, cussing at the crowd. I do not care at all about that, folks. That's fine. Kyrie Irving can do that. Uh, any player can do that. I don't mind that. That we know fans get rowdy, players can get rowdy back. That's a little bit of the competition. That's a little bit of that competitive spirit. These fans, they're at the Celtics game. They're at home. They want to see their team win. They don't want to see the Nets win. So don't take it personally. It's just, hey, I'm trying to do whatever I can to get inside your head. Do fans take it to the extreme sometimes? Yes. Should the fans take it to the extreme sometimes? Yeah, probably not. But are you going to stop everybody? Of course not. So you just got to roll with the punches sometimes try to block out the noise I know it's tough and I know but I mean this is what the fans are they're trying to get in your head and when you show that reaction they know hey it's working and that's exactly what it was uh I forgot to save the clip or it might be right here it may be right here yeah so here it is Watch everybody's reaction. Um, hopefully they show the back of the head reaction because when you see their face you see the reaction but do they all get up and cheer? Kyrie Irving flicks them off and you hear the crowd erupt because they're getting a rise out of you. You got to understand that you're kind of, you know, adding fuel to the fire a little bit. Yes, the Celtics fans are going crazy and Kyrie Irving said they were calling him a pussy and a bitch and all that. And once again, that's kind of, you know, the classic words being thrown out, you know, pussy, bitch, you suck, you're trash, all that. You know, I don't like bringing up anybody's, you know, parents or family when you're just kind of saying it to the man, to the person. I, you know, that I'm fine with that. Bringing out the family, I stay away from that. I don't do that. <clears throat> um, I don't, I, I don't really I wouldn't care if y'all did that I just don't do that but just saying oh you suck you're trash you're a bitch you're a pussy it's like you know those are the traditional words being thrown out at a game when you're in hostile territory you know you left this team you left your mark on this team you stepped on the logo all of that now you're the villain and Kyrie Irving's the villain wherever he goes because he adds to that he adds fuel to that fire a la flicking off the crowd multiple times in this game did it twice um and you know he had a right to flick off the fans once again hey fuck y'all y'all fuck me fuck you you know, we we titled our show, um, Boo Me, Boo You. Same thing, Baker Mayfield. Hey, y'all are going to boo me? What if I came down and booed you at your office? It's like the same thing, folks. It's just the back and forth. It's it's a little bit of playful. We can't cross the line between playful and physical violence and physical harm and all that, obviously. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's competition. And that's what Kyrie Irving says at kind of the press conference after it's all said and done. Um, you know, I'm sure y'all have heard some of these quotes and sound bites. But Kyrie Irving is on quote saying, hey, the, it's fun. This atmosphere, the back and forth, it's fun. So once again, I'm not feeling sorry for Kyrie Irving. He does this himself. And I don't want this, um, or I just want this to kind of be like, hey, you know, he's fueling into this as well. Nobody should feel sorry for Kyrie Irving. Nobody should be mad at Kyrie Irving. Nobody should feel sorry for the fans. Nobody should be as upset at the fans. Because you know what? You, they all left the game. They all went back to their own lives. And they're going to do it again game two. Because once again, this is the rivalry. Rivalry in sports, folks. Where do we go wrong? It's not all sunshine and rainbows, folks. This is competition. And who are, who's anybody to say how seriously or unseriously somebody takes competition? And Kyrie Irving says that in his press conference. Conference, he says, quote, all's fair in competition. Like, all's fair in war. What's, it? What's the actual saying? All's fair in love and warfare or something like that. But Kyrie Irving says, all's fair in competition. And that's exactly it. I don't know what you're going to bring out to the table to win. It's win regardless. It's win however way you can win. That's the literal fundamental of any sports at any age group. We will do whatever it takes to win. All's fair in competition. Look at the UFC. Why do you think after you know you knock somebody out I mean there's kind of that buffer period of hey should I keep going and keep wailing on them or should I let up what do they all do they keep wailing on them until the ref gets involved there's you know three hammer punches on top of the knockout just to make sure because all is fair in competition I don't know are you playing me faking you're knocked out so I'm off my guard I turn my back you hit me I gotta make sure you're knocked out so I know you're knocked out and I know this is probably gonna cause some more injuries by just hammer punching you three more times before the ref can get there to break it all up I'm going for the hammer fist because I'm here to win I'm here to win it's 
It's do or die in this cage, and I'm here to win. I don't know what you're going to do. I, I can't read your mind. I don't know what you're planning to do, what your plan is to win, how far you would go to win. All's fair in competition from the fans to the players. Just don't break that seal between player and uh, fan by going out on the court and getting any physically violent at all. But the booing, the trash talking, the name calling, the middle fingers by both players, uh, by the by Kyrie Irving and the fans, I really don't care. It's all fair in competition. They're trying to get in Kyrie Irving's side. He can use that as motivation. He did use it as motivation. The first time he flicked off everybody was after hitting a big time shot. His foot was on the line, so it was only a two. But they're down at this moment, 82 to 91. And then he flicks off the crowd, crowd getting in his head. Kyrie Irving using that as fuel, and he hit that. That, uh, go ahead three we showed you I mean that's all part of the competition so the fans shouldn't boo because when you boo you get in the players heads Kyrie Irving shouldn't kind of raise his middle fingers back because once again now the fans are going to do that in game two and keep on doing it so you just add to it so that's why we don't care if you if you feed into the beast of the fans or not we don't care because it's on you at the end of the day you're just putting more pressure on yourself if you can handle it great if that's what gets you more motivated great then do that but nobody's feeling sorry or nobody's going to feel disrespected or they shouldn't feel disrespected on how it all goes even Kyrie Irving he's playing into it folks stop getting mad at Kyrie Irving we know this is what he does we talk about this man every single year for the same thing he's done this multiple times be in his career before I don't understand why we all have to get into such an uproar it's competition all's fair in competition here Kyrie Irving says that to himself and I agree a hundred percent with it however you get it done whatever it takes to win the game whatever it takes to win the game because that's all that matters in competition winning did you win no oh, oh, that sucks oh you had a great performance and do we really care you didn't win you know it don't mean a thing if they ain't got that ring Warriors had the best regular season record in NBA history and what happened they lost to the LeBron in the final Finals, blowing a 3-1 lead. I mean, that's just what it is. It's unfortunate. Did you win that year? Oh, you didn't. Oh, man. Doesn't mean a thing if it ain't got that ring. Doesn't matter if you if you didn't win. Only thing that matters is winning. So you better make sure you're winning. And unfortunately, the Nets did not win last night. So, I don't... Uh, what else do we get to here? Um, yeah, one, one more quote. Um, he says he relishes in it as a competitor. And once again, that's another level of competition. They love the the back and forth. They love the verbal. Oh, fuck me. All right. Yeah, fuck you. Oh, you want to fuck me? Okay, watch this. Drains a three in your face. What's good? Yeah, fuck me. Yeah, well, now we're, in, we're, now we're up by three. Now we're up by three. What's good? Fuck me. You want to bring out the beast in me? All right, let me hit this three over you. What's good now? Yeah, that's what I thought. Fuck y'all. As I, you know, blow out that team. Blow out your team. What's good? What's good? It's a back and forth, folks. It's competition. Competition. They relish in it. These players relish in it. That's a little bit of that comp, uh, that competitive spirit, that competitive edge. So once again, you know, I'm not hating Kyrie Irving for this at all. This does not change my opinion on Kyrie Irving at all because I already knew this is what this man was, and you know, I'm fine with what he is as a person. But the fact that we're all getting in such an uproar over this, it's tiresome, first of all, and it's nonsense, second of all. This is competition, folks. This is competition. Stop bringing your social media realm into the real world because social media is not real at all, folks. Stop stop getting fake outrage. Stop with the virtue signaling. And that's all this is on this Kyrie Irving thing. Virtue say, oh, I would never, I would never cuss out a player like that. That's so immature and so improper. And so, oh, okay, congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, congrats. You're soft. You're not winning any rings. You're not winning any sort of high level of competition. Congratulations. You've showed us that. You've just told us that by saying, oh, I would, oh, boo, boo. Yeah, that's why you go to the games. That's the experience. Why do you go to a, why do you go to a movie? They love that. The Marvel movies, the midnight releases, everybody gets dressed up because you want to be immersed with the crowd. Everybody's clapping. Oh my goodness, Iron Man's here, same day. Clap, clap, clap. It's the experience. Why do you go to the game? Obviously, the angles aren't better. You go, you stay home. Oh my goodness, I was watching this game. Oh my goodness, from my television. It was like I was right there. I was loving it. I didn't need to be in the nose, please, seats. But why do you go to the game? To be a part of that atmosphere, to be in the moment, to, you know, get out your booze, to force home. Home court advantage. We have home court advantage for a reason. So the fact that everybody's getting outraged because the fans were booing and flicking off and saying fuck you to Kyrie Irving and even calling him a pussy. You know, I, I don't mind that word. It's once again, it's one of those buzzwords out there to get a reaction. Hey, pussy or pussy. You know, challenging masculinity. Y'all know about that. 
You know, so, you know, it's just what they do, and Kyrie Irving playing back into it. Yeah, fuck me, yeah. Well, look at this. I just hit a three in your man's face, and now I'm flicking y'all off. What's good? The back and forth, that's all competition is, folks. Some players feed into it, some don't. Oh, people aren't just kind of the same? Oh, there's nuance to people? Oh, who would have thought? Who would have thought that? Everybody's not the same. Whoa, whoa, how crazy of an idea. Wow. So... <clears throat> Got no problem with Kyrie Irving. Got no problem with the fans. Keep it up in game two because I'm all here for it. Yes, sir. Kyrie Irving wants to be the villain. He knows this. He knows what he's doing, folks, okay? Um, we don't need anybody rushing to Kyrie Irving's side. If you want to rush to Kyrie Irving's side in his defense, that's fine. I've got no problem with that, but we don't need to do that. Nobody's feeling sorry for Kyrie Irving, okay? He's fine. He's rich. He went home after this game and was like, yeah, I, I, I kind of beat the rest. Yeah, we lost, but I was kind of, you know, whooping those uh, Celtics asses a little, a little bit out there and, you know, hitting some nice daggers. And unfortunately, uh, you know, they lose by one. Kyrie Irving gets spin cycled off of to lose the game. It's unfortunate. So, uh, you know, it doesn't always work. It doesn't always work and then you're you know feeling like the asshole because Kyrie Irving you know lost this battle overall so here comes round two is Kyrie Irving going to be more energetic ready to get it going even harder than he did and took it at game one so this series, folks, is going to be real gosh dang interesting for the rest of the time. And once again, I've got no problem for it, uh, problems with it. This is us versus y'all. We bet on the Celtics. Y'all bet on the Nets. So far, it's 1-0 us. It's close, but it's still 1-0 us. So I'm taking it, folks. Yeah, yeah, we're smarter than y'all. At the current moment, we're smarter than y'all. Okay, okay, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it's unfortunate, it's unfortunate. <laughs> so Kyrie Irving. Stop it, folks. Can we all just stop it? He does this all the time. We know this. Stop getting so upset. This is competition. All's fair in competition. This is coming from the athletes. Okay, folks. All right. Relax. So, got no problem with Kyrie Irving doing any of that stuff. Uh, but it is funny. We know Kyrie Irving's a little bit of the hypocrite here. And here's Kyrie Irving, you know, booing the crowds. Like, oh, so it's once again, he's feeding into it. Kyrie Irving, you're going to have to take the responses because here you are fueling the fire. So, you know, stop with the woe is me. That's that's where I get annoyed when people, you know, try to do the woe is me. When the fans try to do, oh, the woe is me. When Kyrie Irving tries to do, oh, woe is me, all that. That's when I get annoyed. But I got no care if you're dishing it out and you're taking it and all that. It's just competition, folks. All's fair and competition. Competition. Kyrie Irving says he embraces it, relishes in it as a competitor. Folks, relax. All right. There's no reason to get so upset over these things. It's competition. They're actively going out there. Kyrie Irving is still actively going out on the floor. These fans are still actively going and showing up relax there's there's uh there's uh yeah, what's the word consent here there's consent here if Kyrie Irving hated this he would stop basketball if the fans you know hated getting flicked off by Kyrie Irving they wouldn't go to the game these are people engaging willingly in consent that's why they are there together okay relax folks the internet is not real life stop bringing the internet virtue signal virtue signaling morals everybody's the same all that nonsense to the real world folks that's really where we have to stop and draw the line so that's where we got with Kyrie Irving folks um, what else we got here? Yes, Kyrie Irving being the hypocrite that we all know he is. And once again, this is why everybody has strong feelings on the whole Kyrie Irving thing because we get this and this. And it's multiple times, folks. Once again, we've, we've had the same conversation, what, 10 times with Kyrie Irving already? Already this year, this, this week, right? Um, so... This is what Kyrie Irving said two days ago. <laughs> this is a Kyrie Irving quote from two days ago. Here we go. It says, quote, We've seen guys go to different arenas, and no matter how many times you play there, the fans are going to treat them like whatever. Whether they played there, whether they, are, they were injured, whether they injured a player, whether something went back and forth with the crowd. So giving the energy to what the fans are doing, that's not my, where my attention is at. So giving the energy to what the fans are doing that's not where my attention is so giving the energy to what the fans are doing that's not where my attention is but it was his attention yesterday right so once again Kyrie Irving oh, I'm not that's not where my attention is I don't know I'm not giving any attention to the fans this was two days ago I don't know and now here it is yesterday 
giving attention to the fans. So once again, it's just hypocrisy. Everybody's a hypocrite, folks. Everybody's a hypocrite, folks, okay? Another thing we all just have to understand and come to the realization so we stop getting this fake outrage every single time something happens. Oh, you said this and then did something else. Yes, everybody's a hypocrite. Didn't Joe Biden, like, run on, hey, we'll cancel student debt for everybody? Hypocrite. Did he do that yet? Of course not. He says, of course we're not. Of course we're not doing that. And what did the whole Democratic Party run on? Oh, defund the police. And then Joe Biden, like last month, oh, we got to fund the police. What are you out of your mind? We got to fund the police. Defund the police. That's not going to solve anything. We got to fund the police. He went a complete 180. Hypocrisy. Hypocrite. Everybody's a hypocrite, folks. People will say things and do things in the moment to Make them look good. That's all people are, folks. Always wanting to make themselves look good. Making sure that they're looking good. That's why everybody virtue signals, hey, I'm a good person. Look at me. I stand with Ukraine. All of this. Oh, my goodness. I got my mask on. I'm a good person. Look at me. The outward. I don't care how I am in my head. I just need to show outwards to everybody. I'm a good person. Hypocrisy. It will do that. Oh, they all want me to do this one thing? Well, yeah, let me go and do this and say this one thing because this will win me favor. Y'all y'all play general manager mode on like uh, 2K and all that? You know, what's the favorable option that you do? If you say this, you'll get 1,200 fans. But if you say this, you'll lose 600 fans. What are you going to say? Oh, yeah, give me the fans in the moment. Yeah, I'll say this. Yeah, give me the plus 1,200 fans. It's the same thing. It's what everybody does. Make sure that you're looking good outwardly. Yes, hypocrisy. Everybody's a hypocrite, folks. Everybody needs to stop taking everything so to heart, and everybody needs to realize everybody's a hypocrite. So we can all just move on. If somebody says something you don't like, just let it roll off your shoulder. Stop taking it to heart. The, who cares what they say? They'll probably say something different next week, next time you see them. It's not always going to be the same because everybody's a hypocrite, folks. Stop taking everything to heart. And Kyrie Irving takes everything to heart, or at least he shows it, and then we get this whole, whole ordeal every single time. Alrighty, let's get back to the game, shall we? Here we go. Let's go over the stats now. We talked about everything besides the stats, folks. What do we just spend 40 minutes on this one game alone? I've got no problem. I told you this was the greatest game ever, folks. It was fantastic. We had to spend time on it. I don't know what you want from me. But here we go. For the Celtics, Marcus Smart, 20 points, 6 assists, 7 rebounds. Yes, yes. That great pass, folks. That great pass in the beginning to, uh, to win this game, folks, by Marcus Smart. This is what we've been telling y'all about the man. Tier 1 point guard in the NBA, hands down, folks. Absolutely. Jalen Brown, 23 points, 4 steals, 3 assists, 5 rebounds. Daniel Tice at the 5, 4 points on 16% shooting, down low, 6 rebounds. Please do not play this man ever, ever again. And this is so what's so upsetting because the Celtics, they really can win the ring, but man, oh man, they don't have that big. It's going to, you know, they'll run into some problems. If they have to face the 76ers, if they somehow get out of the East, which they can, but if they get out of the East and they have to face the Suns, DeAndre Ayton. So it's just so unfortunate that the Celtics lost Robert Williams, but we are still rocking with this Celtics train until the wheels pop off, baby. Still loving it. <laughs> Al Horford, 20 points, 15 rebounds. We showed you the clutchest one. And then Jason Tatum, 31 points, 8 assists, game-winning defense, game-winning layup, all of that. Jason Tatum, superstar, folks. We must rename the play Jesus Christ Superstar to Jason Tatum Superstar, folks. I'm telling y'all, do I have to stop this show so I can go direct on Broadway? Because the play must be brought to life. Jason Tatum Superstar, yes? Let me look up what Jason, because uh, I don't know what J Jesus Christ Superstar is all about. I just know the name, so hopefully this isn't like anything bad. Jesus Christ Superstar. Let me get the synopsis on this to make sure I'm not like spreading like hate speech or something by saying Jason Tatum should be in this or something. Uh, what's the plot? What's the plot of Jesus Christ Superstar? Loosely based on the Gospels accounts of the Passion, the work in interprets the psychology of Jesus and other characters. Mm, the psychology of Jesus. Maybe, do I got to check this out? That sounds good. I'm all about psychology. Jesus Christ Superstar is a sung through rock opera with music by Andrew Lloyd Webb. Wow, okay. This is a big thing. Yeah, J Jason Tatum Superstar. That's not, uh, that's not racist or mean or anything, right? I, I was a little scared of that happening, but no, yeah, all right. All right, maybe I got to check out Jesus Christ Superstar, but I'll rewrite it for Jason Tatum, folks, truly. 
All right, so Jace Tatum got it done. Everybody in the starting lineup for the Celtics got it done. Coming off the bench, Derek White, seven points, three steals, four assists, three rebounds, solid bench production. Grant Williams, seven points, two rebounds. He shot 0 4 from the three. Nothing great overall. Peyton Pritchard only playing eight minutes, three points on one shot. He hit it. Um, so overall, once again, the depth of the Celtics could get them in trouble. The bigs of the Celtics could get that it could get them in trouble, but not as long as they got JT Superstar, baby. Jason Tatum. Yes, sir. Superstar. Respect it, folks. Respect it. <clears throat> All right. And then for the Nets last night, Kyrie Irving played absolutely magnificent. 39 points, 4 steals, 6 assists, 5 rebounds, 6 of 10 from the 3. Magnificent clutch shots. Um, all the time in the fourth quarter, it was just clutch shots. The Nets were losing for most of the game. It was back and forth. It, well, it wasn't back and forth. It was close, really, the entire game. But uh, Kyrie Irving really took over late third quarter, early-ish mid-fourth quarter. But man, oh, man, just could not put it all together. We saw that game winner buzzer beater by Jason Tatum rolling off of Kyrie. But overall, Kyrie was shooting very well, 6 of 10 from 3 for 39 points. Kevin Durant, 23 points, but only 1 of 5 from the 3. Once again, that late shot in the fourth quarter to ice the game, put him up 4, can't hit it. Clutch ability by Kevin Durant is truly on notice. It's officially on trial. I think the judge has officially brought it uh, to trial for Kevin Durant. Hey, are you clutch? Well, go out and prove it because we've got exhibit A, B, and C so far over the last week and a half, and all of them have shown you're not clutch. So Kevin Durant's going to have to be clutch here again, folks, and it better come soon because they're down 1-0 in the series. Bruce Brown didn't get it done. And remember, y'all were saying the Nets were so scary after they only won by seven to the Cavs in that playing tournament. Once again, Kyrie Irving had to play flawless in that Cavs game to win by seven. Bruce Brown played probably his best game of the year in that Cavs game to only win by seven. Now we get Bruce Brown, well, not floundering, but not doing anything. Only took three shots for only five points. That's not what he did. He had like 18, I think, against the Cavs. Andre Drummond, 8 points, 4 rebounds, nothing great. Seth Curry, 9 points, 6 assists. It's okay. 1 of 4 from the 3. We're, we usually expect a heavier load by Seth Curry. Couldn't really carry it, handle it last night. Nicholas Claxton was getting it really done. And this is where, you know, we are a little concerned. A little potential concern on the Celtics big. Nicholas Claxton was absolutely kind of dominating every time he was out there on the floor. He played 30 minutes last night, a plus 10 on the floor in a one-point loss. That's fantastic. 13 points, 8 rebounds. Yeah, Daniel Tice cannot even stand up to Nicholas Claxton. That's how we know we have a true issue here. And then Goran Dragic finally coming into his own. 14 points, 5 rebounds. Once again, Goran Dragic got off to a very, very slow start ever since he joined this Nets team. But the last maybe 2-3 games, truly been locking in and is a little bit of a guaranteed bucket off the bench for this Nets team, with the, which they desperately need. 14 points on 54% shooting. Another thing for this Nets team before he closed up the game, <clears throat> LaMarcus Aldridge didn't even play last night. So now Nicholas Claxton, LaMarcus Aldridge, I mean Andre Drummond, too. The, the Nets really should, should go through their bigs a little bit more, a little bit more, but that would acquire uh, Steve Nash to actually coach, which we know he doesn't, and that would actually kind of take away shots from Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, which we know they don't really love to do overall, so that probably won't happen, but seeing what the Celtics are without their great big Robert Williams, you should take advantage. Have LaMarcus Aldridge go and beef it up down low. He would absolutely destroy this Celtics team where they would have to, you know, redo their lineup of truly having, like Jason Tatum, play the four for really kind of the entire game. So we'll see what changes Steve Nash and the Nets make. We'll see if Kyrie Irving can keep on being uh, very, very great to keep the game close. So we'll see if Kevin Durant ever becomes clutch again this season. But there it is, folks. Celtics winning by one, 115-114. The easiest, best game of the year so far. And uh, I gotta give credit to the Nets. I know we say they're not scared and y'all need to move off the Nets and stop with the Nets, really. But the Nets have been involved in two of the best games so far this season. The game against the Bucs three weeks ago, step back three by Giannis. And then this game against the Celtics. So the Nets, they're on the losing side of those great games. So, you know, that's why they're not scared. If they were winning those games, yeah, okay, now they're scary. But they're not winning. Why are we scared of somebody that's not winning games against the best teams in the league? I mean, yeah, that's not scary to me, folks. Is it a little 
worrisome? Yeah, okay, I'm worried about Kevin Durant on a nightly basis, absolutely. But am I scared of him? Am I terrified of him? No, no, no. Y'all are going above and beyond with it, okay? Let's rein it in. A little potentially worried, a little concerned. Oh, Kevin Durant's on the, yeah, I'm a little concerned. Am I, am I losing sleep? No, of course not, of course not, absolutely not. I'm getting more sleep, honestly. Um, I'm not, I'm just, cons I'm a little potentially worried. I'm potentially thinking about getting worried about the Nets. That's it, that's it. So, Celtics get the one-point win, 115-114, and it was absolutely amazing. Man, oh, man, I will be watching it again. I'll, I may not even watch the playoff games tonight. And they're not going to live up to this one. I may just rewatch this game three times as the uh, three games play out tonight. All right, here we go. Let's move on. Man, oh, man, wow, we spent way, way a lot of time on that. But I'm not sorry about it, folks. I do not apologize for anything on the show. Okay, unless I'm truly wrong, which I'm not wrong about spending maybe, what, 40 minutes? We spent 50 minutes on this? I told y'all it was great, folks. I told y'all it was great. So much to get through. All right, but let's finish up the games from last night. Here we go. Next game up, Bulls at the Bucks. And what the hell was this? What the actual hell was this? Bulls came back a little bit in this game. But then when they came back, they just floundered. It was so disappointing. The Bulls came back to tie up the game and actually took a lead. But this is what they did after they took the lead, folks. It took them a lot to get the lead. Here we go. Where do they get it? Where do they get it? They officially go up. Uh... They officially go up right here, folks. Officially go up 78 to 77 with 5 minutes and 56 seconds left. And then it took them another full minute to put up any more points. They stayed at 78. Oh, my goodness. They stayed at <laughs> more than one minute. They stayed at 78 points until 3 minutes and 42 seconds. So they went for basically 6 minutes to 342. That's about 2.5 minutes of not putting up any points after they finally took the lead. And then by then, they're down 85 to 80. So, yes, they finally got the lead and then did nothing with it. Did absolutely nothing with the lead. How absolutely garbage. There's no clutch person. There's no superstar. DeMar DeRozan's not a one. Zach Levine was not playing like a one. The only person that was kind of playing like a one last night was like Vucevic, which was completely opposite of our overall thinking heading into the series. Vucevic going against Brooke Lopez and Bobby Portis and Giannis down low. But Vucevic led the team in scoring 24 points. Led the team in rebounds, 17 rebounds. Damn, damn. But overall, nobody could step up and be that superstar. Oh, we finally got the lead against the Bucs, and they were getting blown out the entire game. Finally clawed their way back. But why do we count this Bucks team as scary, folks? They close out in the fourth quarter, and that's exactly what they did. Bucks get the win, 93-86, to win by 7. They don't cover the 10.5. But, but, what did we say yesterday, folks? What did we say yesterday? The smarter way, the safer way to bet the games yesterday, we're doing that 4 point teaser and the four point teaser actually hit folks we had this uh the heat minus seven going to minus four and a half or uh, minus three and a half that was the uh the four point swing they cover the seven naturally but they also cover the four point prop or uh, four point teaser then we went from the celtics minus four to the celtics just even which thank goodness because they only won by one point then we had this Bucks game, Bucks minus 10.5, swallow the 4, now goes to Bucks minus 6.5, they win by 7, and then for the Suns last night, Suns minus 10.5, they actually covered that outright, and also the minus 6.5 for the four-point teaser. So we bet it both ways. We bet, I bet it all with the spread, and then we took the four-point teaser as well, and the four-point teaser actually hit. So we loved that, and we gave you all that advice yesterday on the show. So don't come blaming us. If you lost money, we gave you options to bet, folks. Two prop bets as well that both hit. Uh, the Brook Lopez won. I think we said the DeAndre Ayton won as well. So overall, folks, you know, we gave you all options, all right? That's what we do here on the show. We talk through everything, yes? All right, but let's get back to this game here. Uh, Bulls just couldn't do anything. DeMar DeRozan, Bucks closing out in the fourth quarter. That's what makes them truly terrifying. So for the Bucks last night, Drew Holiday, 15 points, 6 assists, 6 rebounds. We still have Wesley Matthews in the starting lineup at the 2, 6 points, 5 rebounds. Giannis, 27 points, 16 boards. And once again, just Giannis... Do I got this up? I, did I write this down somewhere? Let me bring this up. Hang on, hang on. We might have to show a play. I just remembered I did write this down because there was a moment yesterday. Let me bring up this uh, play right here. Giannis just like driving down the lane with three people like grabbing onto him and he still finishes down the lane, folks. Let me bring this up. We got uh, Bucks third quarter, a minute and 35 seconds was kind of the play. Let me see if I can bring this up quick. Giannis dunk. 
Giannis running uh, 135. Giannis running layup should be right here. Should be this play right here. Watch Giannis just go down the lane. Bucks down three points here. Down 69 to 66 with three uh, two minutes left in the third quarter. Giannis, Giannis just driving down the lane. Three players, four players collapsing on him, and he just drives down the lane and dunks on everybody. I mean, this is Giannis, folks. It's just so uh, like. <clears throat> If we're giving out MVPs every year, folks, on just who's who's the best player, we give it to Giannis every single year, folks. You have to give it to Giannis. This man is unstoppable. Look at this man. Four players collapsing on him, and he just drives and runs through them all and dunks on them all. It's absolutely wild watching this dude, folks. So Giannis is just an, an unstoppable force, folks. It's truly that. And watching this man every single game is just so great to watch. Once again... Able to watch greatness in real time, folks. We really can't let um, knocks and judgments cloud that up. Yes, we knock some people on the show. We knock Aaron Rodgers. That's our biggest one. Yes, he's still great. And we still have to, you know, marvel and revel and relish in all the great throws that he still makes in real time. But let's not, you know, cloud that judgment of our knocking and not witnessing and uh, embracing and just just watching and soaking in the greatness. Aaron Rodgers is still great, folks. Never get that twisted on what we say, folks. Yes, we knock. We still want this man to be, you know, uh, exiled from the league for 10 years. That doesn't change. But still watching and witnessing what this man does on the field is still absolutely fantastic. So don't get those two things twisted, folks. But Giannis last night, 27 points, 16 rebounds. Man, oh man, just taking over late in the fourth quarter, dominating in the fourth quarter what the Bucks do to close out and still win by seven. This is what this Bucks team is, and this is why we need to be afraid of them. And once again, why this Bulls team was frauds all year long. Had a lead, couldn't do anything with it. Floundering the lead, multiple missed opportunities. It's not like they had the lead, and then you know Giannis started hitting step-back threes, and Drew Holiday was starting to hit threes as well and, you know, they just got outshot. No, no, no. They weren't making the shots when they had the lead. The Bucs were still missing as well. That's what kept the games close. That's why the Bucs didn't truly run away with this game because they couldn't hit shots either. But the fact that the Bulls could never capitalize on any of that, it was just this is exactly what they are and why we never bought them really any late in the season. So... Bulls, DeMar DeRozan, 18 points on 24% shooting on 25 shots. Once again, this is not MVP. And I know this is, you know, playoffs now. So, you know, everything that happens now does not play any during the MVP discussion. And, you know, everybody always talks about it. You know, uh, they even said it on, you know, Joe Kick after that game went against the Warriors. They're like, that's y'all's MVP. It's like, you know, I, I get why y'all said it. I truly get it. But we can't take any of this into consideration when we count the MVP. It's unfortunate. Uh, we get Vucevic, best player last night, but not, still not enough. 24 points, 17 rebounds, and I don't know if they'll have another game like this in the series. I think they can start locking that up. So they did not take advantage of potentially the only game that they could win in this series. Then we had Zach Levine, 18 points, 10 rebounds. He shot 2 of 10 from 3, just not enough. We had Kobe White coming off the bench, 10, 12 points, 50% shooting. I'd like to see that man in the starting lineup, but they're still rocking with Alex Caruso in the starting lineup. I don't know if I love that. So I think you got to make the switch. Kobe White playing 22 minutes. We love it. Maybe play him a little bit more. Maybe get him in the starting lineup. We saw them win. Their win numbers with him in the starting lineup is like 2-1. Two 2-1 to one. Two to one wins the losses. It's like, let's try something else. Maybe Alex Caruso isn't the guy. Seven points, two assists last night. Maybe it's not the guy. So the Bucks get the win, 93-286. And then the last game of the night... We get Pelicans at the Suns. Suns win. They cover the 10.5 point spread by 11. <laughs> they only win by 11, so covered it by half a point. Fantastic. Suns get the win 110 to 99 over the Pelicans. And the Pelicans, uh, they were getting blown out all game, but they made a nice stretch, a nice run late in the second half to try to come back. But the Suns reopened it up because late in the fourth quarter, midway fourth quarter, late fourth quarter, Chris Paul decided to go manic, decided to go absolute manic. What does this man shoot? Let's get the actual shot shots up here in the second half because this man was just taken over and I loved it and this is what people forget about Chris Paul he showed this last year in the playoffs as well it's like you better like always account for Chris Paul because he'll take it to you and that's exactly what he did everybody slept on Chris Paul this entire game and then like midway fourth quarter he ended up just 
taking shot after shot after shot, like three deep threes, driving in the layup, and ended up shooting seven of eight from the fourth quarter. It was absolutely ma magnificent. He was getting everything he wanted, playing everybody, driving easy. I mean, look at this, folks. He's getting inside the paint, and then he was hitting these deep threes. He was doing it all because you sleep on Chris Paul because during the regular game, you know, from, you know, just from the jump of the game and just a normal game, he's looking to facilitate the floor. He's averaging only like 15-15. 15 points, 15 assists, so everybody just assumes he's facilitating the floor. And then when you see that for three straight quarters, you get a false sense of security on how to guard Chris Paul, and then he turns it up, and then he makes you look foolish clownish, and that's really why the Suns were able to hold on to that lead and not flounder this game away was because Chris Paul decided to take over and you know be in charge. The man ended up with 30 points, led the team in scoring, 10 assists, led the team in assists to go out and close this game game one this Suns team with experience that's why they're scary folks the Nets have not even played you know a full year together why are we scared about them Ben Simmons potentially maybe coming back later in the series for only 10 to 15 minutes why should we be afraid of them when the Suns team went through the entire gauntlet last year and had their hearts broken and now have gotten so much better from last season even though they made the finals they're better than what they were last year this is who we should be afraid of this this is who we should be putting our scared thoughts into, this Suns team, because Chris Paul showed that, hey, I can step up when I need to. I can take over when I need to. DeAndre and 21 points, 9 rebounds, 2 assists, getting it done as well. Some big-time clutch shots by DeAndre and to, once again, keep that big lead. Chris Paul as well. This Suns team is different, folks. They've got the experience. They're hardened now. This is a hardened team. They felt that heartbreak of a finals loss, and Chris Paul doesn't have that many seasons left in him, and he's playing out of his mind this year. This is why the Suns are truly terrifying. If y'all see, if we have to call the Nets scary, if we have to like go down to y'all's level and call the Nets team scary, we'll do that, but we'll call the Suns terrifying, and we'll call the uh, Celtics terrifying. Okay, the Nets are scary. Well, the Suns are terrifying, so what now? So Chris Paul gets it done. DeAndre Ayton gets it done. Devin Booker, 25 points, 8 assists, gets it done. Jay Crowder, 0-4 from 3. <laughs> Classic Jay Crowder. You know, we know we can turn it on here and there. Um, McCall Bridges playing every single game this season. Fantastic. 11 points, 5 rebounds. And then off the bench, Cameron Johnson, 13 points. <clears throat> We're going to need a better showing from Cameron Payne. He uh, one of 6 from the field yesterday for only 2 points. And we know he's so much better than that. So we, can, we are going to need him to step it up a little bit more. But overall, Chris Paul took over last night and got it done. For the Pelicans who lost, C.J. McCollum, not a great game. 36% shooting from the field. He did have 25 points, 6 assists, and 8 rebounds. Everything was falling a little bit better for this Pelicans team in the second half. So we'll see if they can kind of build upon that momentum late and try to make another run in game number 2 to try to steal a win. On the road, we had Valanchunas, 18 points, 25 boards, 13 were offensive rebounds. The man was all over the place on the rebounds. I didn't get it, but it happened. So, by rebuying our kind of belief into Valanchunas, I'll take that. And then Brandon Ingram, 18 points. Once again, only shot 35%. No no real great scoring here by, this, uh, by the Pelicans. No real efficient great shooting, great scoring. So, we'll see if they can build upon this nice, solid effort. This was better than I thought they would play, honestly. I thought this would be like a 20-point blowout by the Suns. I thought DeAndre Ayton would have like 50 points. But they played better than what I thought. So, like we see, the Hawks are going to get swept. I don't know if the Pelicans will get swept. They may win one at home. So we'll see if they can build upon this good, solid game one here and try to hit it back harder in game number two. But shout out to the Pelicans. They can still make the series decently, decently entertaining where the Hawks, it's, it's game over for them already. All righty, folks, that is all the NBA we had to go over from last night, but we still have to talk about betting today, and we spent a lot of time here in the NBA. Show has truly gotten away from us today. I was not expecting to spend all this time on the games last night. Really wanted to get to Kenny Pickett, Pen Kenny Pickett but none of that's going to happen. So I apologize there, folks. I know I, I had my own hopes up, so I'm sorry I got y'all's hopes up for watching Kenny Pickett today. But, uh, yeah, we had to spend time on that uh, Celtics game because that's what it – that's what it deserved. It deserved all that time in the show, honestly. All right, now that, uh, should we go over this? Here we go. Let's go over this quickly before we talk about the betting. Uh, the finalist awards here, uh, finalists for these awards were announced today. So here we go. Let's talk through them and see where the disrespect is. 
All right, finalists for the most improved player. We get Darius Garland for the Cavs, John Morant of the Grizzlies, and DeJounte Murray of the Spurs. Now, three great candidates. The Cavs were great this year. The Spurs were great down the stretch this season. So DeJounte Murray, Darius Garland definitely deserves some credit and recognition this season. But John Morant, I mean, come on, come on. We saw the giant step the Grizzlies took from last season to this season, and John Morant was a huge reason why I think John Morant's got to get the most improved. Then we get six man of the year, and the three finalists are Tyler Hero, Cam Johnson, and Kevin Love. Now, Kevin Love has been fantastic off the bench for this Cavs team. Cameron Johnson, really good when he's available for the Suns, but Tyler Hero, the man, has went manic this season, and it's really no debate. Tyler Hero's got to be the six man of the year. All right, then we get the Coach of the Year finalists, and all right, but I think they're missing one. We get Taylor Jenkins for the Grizzlies, head coach of the Grizzlies. We get Eric Spolstra, head coach for the Heat. Love that. Definitely got to give him the nod. And then Monty Williams, head coach for the Suns. Now, I get it. Eric Spolstra in the Heat, number one seed in the Eastern Conference. Monty Williams in the Suns, number one seed in the Eastern Conference. The, you know, the Grizzlies playing absolutely great this season, even without John Moran. So, obviously, we have to tip our cap to Taylor Jenkins. Jenkins, and I don't want to take anything away from these coaches, but maybe expand this to a top four, a final four, because not having Ima Aduka year one, this is year two for Jenkins, this is, you know, multiple years by Eric Spolstra, this is, you know, back-to-back -back great years by Monty Williams, this is year one, Ima Aduka, who just lost Robert Williams, who does not have the star power that the Suns have, that the Heat have, uh, Grizzlies, they don't have the star power either, so once again, we tip our half off to Taylor Jenkins and I don't want to you know take anything away from Taylor Jenkins by substituting in Emo Duca so this is why we're saying like a final four not a final three of substituting uh, Jenkins for Uduka but I, I really want Uduka to have some more recognition here this season uh, once again everybody just overlooks the Celtics nobody wants to give credit to Jason Tatum Uduka all that so, not seeing Ime Uduka as the finalist for Coach of the Year, it does pain me a little bit, but these coaches are truly deserving as well. Monty Williams, you know, best record in the league, number one seed in the Western Conference after that heartbreak, um, you know, losing in the finals. We saw what the Heat did, losing in the finals in the bubble. Not really good last year. Suns got to the finals, now still the best team in the league still, so... Either one of these three coaches can win it. I love Eric Spolstra. We love the call to move Duncan Robinson down to the bench. I think that was fantastic. It truly helped him out last night in the playoffs. So either Eric Spolstra, Monty Williams, J Taylor Jenkins can earn it as well. I mean, what this Grizzlies team was able to do without John Morant is absolutely mag it's marvelous. It's mind-blowing. So either one of these three coaches win it. That's fine. I just wish Emo Duka got the nod. Get the nod? I nod him. I nod Emo Duka. All right, then we get Defensive Player of the Year finalists. We get McCall Bridges for the Suns, Rudy Gobert of the Jazz, and Marcus Smart of the Celtics. And once again, everybody was kind of pointing to Marcus Smart allowing like 30-plus points by Kyrie Irving, really good, and everyone was like, oh, this is your Defensive Player of the Year, what everybody says. Uh, once again, Rudy Gobert is on this list. You know, I don't know who, we, who I give it to out of these three. I haven't really been studying the defense of these players. We have loved Marcus Smart this season. So somebody's got to get recognition on the Celtics team. So we're voting for Marcus Smart on Defensive Player of the Year. Go and win and get some respect for the Celtics team, for Jason Tatum and for Ime Uduka. Yes, Marcus Smart for Defensive Player of the Year. And then we get Rookie of the Year here. Three finalists, Scotty Barnes of the Raptors, Cade Cunningham of the Pistons, and Evan Mobley of the Cavs. And I think I'm giving it to Evan Mobley on how great he's been able to fit in with Jared Allen, with Jared Allen out of the Cavs, able to step it up even more, and the fact that this Cavs team was great when they were all healthy together, Evan Mobley was a huge part of that. Now, no disrespect to Scotty Barnes, who has been helping this Raptors team be absolutely fantastic. Cade Cunningham has been doing everything he can in his power to get this t Pistons team good. Just unfortunately, Jeremy Grant never got the memo, and Sadiq Bey woke up way too late. So same thing with Isaiah Stewart. So I think I'm giving it to Evan Mobley, but all three of these rookies truly have gotten it done all year long. So shout out to these rookies. Um, I did not see an MVP. 
uh, three finalists. Uh, so let me recheck their page to see if they ever sent that out. I got every other award but the MVP. Did they not narrow down the MVP to the final three? That's a little interesting. Once again, I think there's a little wonkiness being... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Three finalists for the MVP. We get Giannis, Joel Embiid, and Jokic. So those are everybody's top three. Um, I still think I get Jokic, still can't do Giannis, they weren't the number one seed, I can't give them it, uh, Joel Embiid, very, very great as well, led the, led the league in scoring this season, I can definitely understand why Joel Embiid, um, ah, man, it's tough, it's tough, um, Jokic, just the no help and just to be able to survive in that Western Conference, I think I still give it to Jokic. And I know you can still make a, the same argument a little bit for Joel Embiid, but Joel Embiid still had Tyrese Maxey and Seth Curry and Andre Drummond, you know, in the beginning of the season for most of the year before the trade deadline when, you know, they lost Seth Curry and Andre Drummond. But Tyrese Maxey was playing out of his mind like a true starting one. Jokic never really had that. He had Monte Morris. It's like, uh. So I get it. Joel Embiid didn't have this great cast of characters either. But then, you know, he went from those great role players helping him out to James Harden. Jokic never had the role players like that. He had Aaron Gordon. I don't even know if I count him as a role player, really. So it's tough between Jokic and Embiid. But I think Jokic really did the same things Joel Embiid did. I mean, the records were pretty much the same. Uh, we didn't really see Joel Embiid do anything like leaps and bounds better. He they went 51 and 31 this season. The Nuggets were 48 and 34. So three more wins for Joel Embiid with a little bit more talent. That's it. All right. I don't know if I agree. Once again, I'm not going to knock Joel Embiid if he wins it. I'm not going to be that upset about it. Uh, but I think Jokic, you know, better than last season. We gave him MVP last season. Better here. Worse, worse roster to work with. It's pretty impressive. So we'll see who gets the MVP and all that. Those awards will be coming out. But do not be surprised if they try to not give it to Jokic. They're trying, trying everything in their power to not give it to Jokic, folks. Oh, you know, he doesn't even know where his MVP was last year. Oh, he doesn't care. I think that's a story, folks. I think that I think that's conspiratorial. Try to move that story out there to be like, hey, let's give it to Embiid. He will appreciate the trophy. He loves the trophy. He will never leave his house without the trophy. I think that that's interesting, folks. I think it's interesting. All right, now let's see what we have tonight in the NBA. According to DraftKings, if this wants to load, is this not loading for us? The heck is going on? Do we even have internet connection? Tweets are still loading. All right. All right, DraftKings not wanting to be brought up here, but we've got our second device, so no worries. Here we go. Let's see what we have tonight in the NBA and how we can make a little bit of money. We have been absolutely killing it. Fingers absolutely on the pulse here in the NBA, folks. Now, let's see. Now, we're getting game twos tonight, folks. Game twos. So we'll see how much is Vegas changing on the spreads. Drastic change. No change. Do we change? Do we take points instead of swallowing points? Let's see what is on tap tonight. Here we go. First game up. We got the Raptors at the 76ers. 76ers minus 7.5, Raptors plus 7.5 here. All righty, let's see, ins and outs for the Raptors. We get Scotty Barnes out, oof, tough. Gary Trent Jr., a game-time decision. Thaddeus Young, a game-time decision. And I believe, let me go to NBA Fantasy Labs, I believe I saw these a little bit earlier, but it's not looking like these players are going to play. Thaddeus Young remains probably doubtful. Gary Trent Jr. missed Monday's team shoot-arounds and remains doubtful. So yes, Thaddeus Young and Gary Trent Jr. are game time decisions, but it's not looking like they're going to be playing. Now, why is that important? Because two of their starters are potentially not playing, and we know the Raptors aren't the deepest team. They really just kind of hit you with their starting five. A little bit of the 76ers as well. So yeah, I'm swallowing seven and a half here with Philadelphia. Um, for them, everybody's good to play. So Minus seven and a half. The Raptors not at full strength. There's no way we can bet them. The 76ers minus seven and a half, I think, is even good value at this point. I was kind of expecting to swallow 10, honestly. Now that we've got it up uh, on here, let's bring it up. 
But yeah, I'm taking the 76ers minus seven and a half here, folks. I honestly thought we were going to be at that 10 point range hearing all this Gary Trent Jr., Scotty Barnes, Daddy's Young News. So 76ers still at home. Now, I think Nick Nurse is going to implement a better game plan for the Raptors here. But once again, you don't have your players. So, you know, game plan, yeah, it can get you so far. You still need the execution, make or miss league. Going with the 76ers here at home, get up to nothing. 76ers, you know little dominated in that first meeting. I think I get the same thing here. Raptors not at full strength. There's no way I could take any amount of points here. 76ers won by 20 game one. Yeah, better game plan, but worse players now. Probably still 20 as well. We're choosing the 76ers minus 7.5 here. And what was this spread the first time? Minus 4.5 here? So Vegas really isn't... Uh, this ended at a pick -em? No way. No way this game ended at a pick -em. What? What is, no, 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 no. What is score mobile on? There's no way that was a pick -em. It was like 76 was minus four and a half. That's crazy. I don't know why score mobile. Usually you can go and track what the odds were, the closing odds were, and they said it was a pick -em. I don't believe that. I, I don't think I ever saw it at a pick -em. And if it was ever a pick -em, that's the most disgusting, disrespectful thing I've ever seen. To have the 76ers a pick them by closing time, that's crazy. But I want to say the spread ended at like four and a half. I think we swallowed four and a half with the 76ers. So this spread hasn't really changed that much. The only three point difference here now from game one to game two is because of all those players not playing. Not, nothing having to do with the 76ers being dominant here. So Vegas not changing their tune on the 76ers, and we'll cash in again here. We'll swallow the 7.5 here with Philadelphia. All right, next game up here, we get the Mavericks at the 76ers. Jazz, or what did I just say? <laughs> what did I? Jazz at the Mavericks game two here. Sorry about that. Jazz minus five, Mavericks plus five here, folks. And once again, this spread isn't changing. This spread isn't changing. What was this, the game one? This was four and a half, five. Jazz minus five and a half, and now it's only Jazz minus five. I don't even think Luka Doncic is playing today. Let's check the ins and outs. For the Mavericks, Luka game time decision. Okay, okay, game time decision, but the spread only changed half a point. I don't really see... I don't really see Luka playing here. Um, I believe I have a tweet up I can bring up on Luka Doncic. I got a tweet on Luka about what is going on. Got uh, some quotes by the uh, by the coach here. What do we get? Luka Doncic, unlikely. This was 23 hours ago by NBA Fantasy Labs. He was unlikely to play. Then we had this. Jason Kidd, after Luka Doncic did light shooting for the second straight day, says, quote by Jason Kidd, yesterday was another good day, and today he's back on the court. So that's a plus. And we'll see how he feels tomorrow. And this was yesterday. So um, another one right here. Hopefully he can get um, on the floor soon. That's really it. So that spread doesn't really give us confidence that Luka Doncic is coming out there on the floor tonight. Only a half a point difference. For the Jazz, everybody's good to go. And once again, the Jazz, we don't love them. We don't want to swallow the points here, but they did cover game one. And I'm going to take the Jazz here, minus five again. No look at Doncic. We can't bet the Mavs. The Mavs were kind of on their bullshit defensively game one, and they still lost by six. Are they going to be able to repeat that defensive performance? I don't know. Once again, they need Luka Doncic on the floor. So until Luka Doncic is out there on the floor, we still got to bet the Jazz. We'll swallow five here with the Jazz tonight. And then the last game of the night here, we get the Nuggets at the Warriors. Nuggets plus seven, Warriors minus seven here. And I don't believe this spread has changed from game one to game two. Closing odds were Warriors minus seven. I think we locked in Nuggets plus six and a half. So once again, spread is not changing. Uh, Vegas is not changing any of the spreads here from game one to game two. For the Nuggets, everybody's still good to go. And for the Warriors, everybody's still good to go there. And once again, Steph Curry getting better, better, healthier. May still come off the bench, but it doesn't matter. Jordan Poole's our man. The Splash Triplets. It's no longer the Splash Brothers. We got three now. Triplets. Splash Triplets here in Golden State. And I'm ready to swallow seven with the Warriors as well. The Nuggets, they're not going to just joke it down low. And even what they do, Draymond Green is getting it done defensively. 
We should have never questioned them. We're swallowing the seven with the Warriors here. The Nuggets plus seven is not good value until until they are at home. And we'll see what the spread is here the next time when they when the Nuggets do go home and see how Vegas flips this spread, if any. But that would be the only time I would take points with the Nuggets if they are at home. They're not at home here. Warriors minus seven. This is oh man, I'm um, I'm loving some of this value, folks. The Jazz, this is what I'm going to tell y'all to do. I told y'all to bet the four-point teaser yesterday to kind of lessen those 10-point spreads that thankfully needed a little bit of lessening. Same thing with the Celtics, minus four. But, but, this is what you bet here, folks. Don't bet the Jazz. We're only betting the Jazz here to take every single game, and I may throw a few bucks on the Jazz here. But parlay these two together, folks. Parlay these two together. 76ers minus 7.5 and, and the Warriors minus 7. These are excellent, easy-peasy spreads. They showed out game one. They're going to keep that energy game two. Uh, Raptors don't even have any of their players here. This is crazy. 76ers minus 7.5. Warriors minus seven. Parlay those two together, folks. That's exactly what I'm doing. And I may put a pretty penny on that, folks. I may put a pretty penny on that. Loving those values tonight. So all of our endorsements, once again, going back to the Heat. Go bet the Heat 4-0 for this uh, series. I still can't believe you can bet it. It's fantastic. And it's at plus 300 odds. So go and wrap that up. Uh, 76ers for today, minus 7.5. Jazz minus 5 in the Warriors, minus 7. 76ers, Jazz, that's the best value. Uh, 76ers Warriors, that's the best value. The Jazz, it's still good, still can go hit or miss. Once again, we were not sold on the Jazz, even without Luka Doncic in game number one. But uh, at the end of the day, they still cover the six and a half. I still think they can cover five here. One more game without Luka Doncic. But if Luka Doncic does go, I'm definitely interested to see what this spread moves to. So do not bet this game now. Wait until we have official confirmation on Luka Doncic before you touch this game. Or if you want to get a little sneaky, maybe Maybe bet the Mavericks plus five to get great value because this spread is coming down, big time down when Luka Doncic is in. Ugh, depending on how you feel about Luka Doncic. So a little bit of a crazy game here. Jazz Mavericks, a lot can happen here. So time it right. Time it right, folks. Bet the Mavs plus five now. Get some great value if Luka plays. But if he doesn't play, I don't know if that's great bet. Maybe bet it a little bit later, lose some value. It's up to y'all. I'm leaving this one up to y'all on how to bet it. I'm telling y'all to bet the 76ers and the Warriors, though. That is coming from me, okay? Alrighty, that is all the NBA we had to go over for today, and that's might just do it for today, folks. Might just do it for today, but before we get out of here, we got to talk about this because... I got. I don't know what the hell is going on over there in San Francisco. The fans, I think, are a little being misled a little bit here. So let's say what happened yesterday. So NFL rumors, an account that you know we keep an eye on. They said the Panthers have looked into 49ers Jimmy Garoppolo this week. I responded to that tweet saying Jimmy not agreeing to that. LMAO because Jimmy Garoppolo. Once again, what do we know? Let's say what we know. The 49ers at the end of the year after that last game. The 49ers and Jimmy Garoppolo were all on the same page. Hey, I'm out of here, and I'm going to go wherever I want to go, and the 49ers are going to allow that, to allow me to go wherever I want to go. They're going to do it. They're going to do me right. They're not going to do them dirty. They're going to do them right. That's what we know so far. Now, we also know that Jimmy Garoppolo can't throw for 17 weeks. So, not a lot of teams traded for him. You know, a lot of people passed on him, went to other quarterbacks and all that. Now, we know the Panthers are still out there in search of a quarterback. Absolutely. But why would Jimmy Garoppolo want to go to Carolina? Absolutely not. That that organization is trash. We can't believe in Matt Rule. The Mad's not a good head coach. Christian McCaffrey's not like a big name anymore. He's up for recertification this season, running back wise, because we have to see if he can stay healthy for a season. So there's nothing attractive about this Panthers team. And then you got Robbie Anderson, who's a good receiver, but he's actively knocking another quarterback. I mean, he's not knocking Jimmy Garoppolo. He's knocking Baker Mayfield, and a little rightfully so, but does Jimmy Garoppolo want to go to that organization where if maybe everything isn't going right, the receivers may actively say, hey, I don't like it here or something like that. So I, there's nothing attractive. There's not. There should be nothing attractive to any player about going to Carolina, especially Jimmy Garoppolo, who's gotten two Super Bowls and no success. He's not going to the Panthers, folks. We told y'all it was stupid even for y'all to say, and I'm sorry I had to insult y'all, but it was stupid for y'all to say, oh, Baker Mayfield to the Colts. That's going to work. That was the dumbest thing y'all have said this season, and y'all have said some things this year. 
But the, the Colts got swindled like Carson Wentz. They're not going to a worse quarterback in Baker Mayfield, folks. They're not doing that. And what happened? The Colts go with Matt Ryan. Of course they're not going with Baker Mayfield. The Panthers are not getting Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo will not sign off on going to the Carolina Panthers. So I tweet that out. Jimmy not agreeing to the Panthers. LMAO. And this is where all the fans started to attack me. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, let me see my replies here. Let me go to the replies. Um, we get, uh, uh, somebody points the, the obvious out that Jimmy no longer has a no trade clause. And I think the league has told him loud and clear what they think of him. Carolina is one of two starting jobs available. It's one of two. What about the 49ers starting job? That's still available. Everybody needs to stop with this Trey Lance. Trey Lance is not the future. Trey Lance is not good. Everybody needs to get off of Trey Lance. If Trey Lance was truly good, they would have made the switch by now. They're hesitant to make the switch. Why? I should tell you something, folks. So everybody stop. Uh, and this tweet got 29 likes. Jimmy no longer has a no trade clause. Yeah, well, also the 49ers said that they would do him right and would trade him wherever he wants to go, where only he would want to sign off on. So stop it with this dunk. What did we say? We already had this conversation last week. Stop trying to get the dunk on me like I don't know what I'm talking about. Me here every day, two hours, uh, yelling at y'all every single day. I don't know what I'm talking about. This tweet gets more likes than I did. I only got one like. This got 29 because of the dunk. Oh, Jimmy he doesn't have a no trade clause. You know, they'll send him wherever he does. He can control his own destiny. The 49ers told us that. That's why we come here and talk every single day to get the latest, folks. This one tweet. Why we don't stop bringing social media into the real world because of this right here. This like this tweet gets 29 likes for what? For what? And Carolina is one of two starting jobs available? No, no, because the 49ers is available as well. I guess it's not because Jimmy Garoppolo, this is the un- Fortunate news that these 49ers fans need to hear. Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be your quarterback next year. And y'all should be thankful for that. I am I'm literally done with these 49ers fans, folks. The fact that y'all are actively trying to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo, even though he brings you to the Super Bowl every single year, it's absolutely laughable, folks. I cannot believe what these 49ers fans are doing. Um, so, uh, I'm, 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 I'm telling y'all folks, you 49ers fans, y'all better get used to having Jimmy Garoppolo be your quarterback again this year, folks. Okay. That is the unfortunate news. I guess I have to deliver to y'all cause y'all are some reason still wanting Trey Lance. I don't get it. Has Trey Lance been to the Super Bowl? Has Trey Lance been to an NFC championship game? Oh, he hasn't. So you, uh, you, you just assuming he is going to get there. All right, once again, I asked y'all 49ers fans how long it will take for J uh, Trey Lance to get to the NFC Championship game, and y'all said two years. Maybe his first year, but definitely by his second. So that's y'all. y'all. And I should have taken that a little bit um, more to heart to truly see that y'all don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> These 49ers fans don't know what they're talking about. They don't know football. I'm sorry, folks. If you're a fan of the 49ers, y'all just don't know football. I don't know what y'all have been saying. Y'all are like the spoiled rich kids here with this 49ers team always getting, um, you know, even in that tough division, always competitive, always knocking on the door of the Super Bowl every single year with Jimmy Garoppolo, and y'all want to get rid of him. Y'all are some rich-ass suburban, uh, you know, um of uh, uh, trust fund kids out here. That's these 49ers fans, folks. All right. Always having success, but still wanting to get rid of their quarterback that brought you their success. It's crazy to me. So these 49ers fans, a little delusional out here. Okay. All right. Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be your quarterback. Get over it. Trey Lance is not good. You all, y'all need to understand that. I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo is going anywhere. And if he goes to Carolina, I feel so bad for the man. Absolutely. Alrighty, folks, we are going to get out of here for today. We are back live tomorrow, noon Eastern, to break down all the great NBA playoff action. Do we get another nail-biter game like the Celtics-Nets? It's going to be hard to top it, but I'm, I'm hoping we get another game like that. Absolutely. So, we'll be back here tomorrow, live noon Eastern, doing it all over again, breaking everything down, telling you where to win money, and uh, see if we can get to Kenny Pickett. Probably not. Mm, probably not tomorrow. Maybe again on Wednesday, we try. All right, folks, we're going to get out of here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We are back live tomorrow, noon Eastern. Have a great one. Enjoy playoffs today, folks. Once again, we're still in the golden age. Do not turn off those playoffs, yes? Keep that playoff on your television. Once again, golden era all week this week as well. All righty, folks, we're out of here. Have an absolute great one, and we will see you tomorrow. Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be your quarterback, 49ers fans. Get over it. Get used to it, and you should be bowing down to that man, okay?
Jeez, get used to it.